Jim Calhoun himself. His team will be playing tomorrow at 5 o'clock Eastern time in the beginning rounds of the D3 tournament against Hobart in Springfield, not far from the Hall of Fame itself. How does that feel, Jim? It feels great. I went to school in Springfield at AIC, and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great experience being in any tournament and NCAA tournaments in my lifetime have been pretty significant. And uh, having these kids and his good friend uh, Reese Davis said, you know, we bought men's basketball, about well, basketballs so about... Uh, 16 months ago, <laughs> and here we are in the NCAA tournament. How did you do it? How did you do it so quickly? Well, they did. You know, you got, we got good players. Anybody who tells you they win without good players isn't telling you the truth. And uh, we have really good kids, and they bought in, and the first year was pretty good. We got to the finals of the league, <clears throat> excuse me, championship. And this year, we lost a couple of real good players. We added some pieces that fit into kind of the way we wanted to play with the kids who had come back. I hate to use that over word use, which is called culture. But they understood that there was a standard set that I wasn't going to deviate from. Or Glenn Miller, my associate head coach, my son Jeff, and all of us, we have a standard. And someone said, how do you treat them? Well, the same way I treated them at UConn. So Delshawn Jackson, who had 46 the other night, was treated like Kim Iwaka. I mean, it's basketball. And it's the old thing at Hoosiers where the guy goes out and measures <laughs> the rim 10 feet. We're going to play. Oh, by the way, they're keeping score. So if they're going to keep score, you might as well win. But this isn't the first time where you've come in somewhere. You did it at UConn. You built a winner at Northeastern before that, where you either changed uh, a program from where it had been, or you kind of created from whole cloth. How do you do that? Yeah, 24-7, um, great schools that believe in you and want the same thing. You know, athletics and in, in, in basketball in my lifetime, the 50 years that I've been coaching, become the front porch of a university. And it shows people to come in and look at us, but more importantly, look at the house behind us. We're just a porch. And I just think that if the university supports you, doing things the way they want. We tell people, uh, St. Joe's is 92 years old. We still have the mercy values. We believe in that, but we're gonna build on it and we're gonna take it and modernize it in the sense of, we believe that greatness is greatness in anything. And, and yeah, am I fairly demanding? Fairly's are probably, my players wouldn't say that. I just did something with Kimball Walker. He says, Coach, I decided that if I can play for you, I can play for anybody. And it's not the key. I love them. I love them so much, I expect a lot of them. I mean, I, I really do. When I get upset with them, it isn't because I'm angry at them. I'm disappointed for them, not even in them, because they're kids. Jim, there, there has been controversy, too. Uh, a former associate athletic director is suing the school. You're not named in the suit, but you're mentioned. Uh, she says that after you were hired, it became a hostile workplace environment. She accuses you of some sexist behavior. I know you've denied these allegations before, but let me ask you again, what do you have to say to them? Disappointed, uh, I'm nice young woman. She got fired by the institution because the institution wanted to go in a different direction. I didn't feel they needed her at that particular point in time. Nothing to do with me. Secondly, the university then brought independent counsel in. They looked at every coach, male, female, et cetera, and come up with no single sense of any kind of allegation that was said. She did get uh, let go from her job, and that's in life unfortunate. The president, board of trustees, tells me it happens all the time, and I'm disappointed, and we're going to march on. I love the place I'm at. I love the people I'm with, and that's <laughs> what I have to say. We all, you know, the, the problem I, I, for all of us, and you understand this, Jerry, when you do an interview, that people don't particularly care for, whatever it may be, fair or unfair, you know, sometimes the biggest name and the brightest light gets the, the biggest hit. My big thing is, let's go St. Joe's, love the place, and getting ready for a basketball tournament. You are 77 now. You've battled cancer. Uh, how much longer do you want to be doing this? Forever, but it's not going to happen that way. <laughs> you know, I was doing ESPN, which I love, Reese Davis, uh, all the guys I work with, terrific, go to the games, see my friends, John Beeline, Tommy Izzo, et cetera. But you know, I, I didn't have any skin in the game. I didn't have the sweaty palms, which I like. Not anybody else likes it, but I do. And I missed it. I missed the kids. Jim Calhoun's Blue Jays on a 25-game winning streak heading into the D3 tournament. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app and live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN+.